Excellencies, Ministers of Health, Science and Technology and Education and Gender, Professor Frank Strongbird, Chairman of Executive Board and Family Board of EMERC, Honorable Getacho Ngeda, Deputy Director General, Your Excellency Professor Afork Kasu, State Minister of Science and Technology of Ethiopia, Your Excellencies UNESCO Ambassadors in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Addis. Welcome to the capital city of Africans. And again, welcome to the capital city of your grand, grand, grand mom, Lucy. <laughs> which symbolizes Ethiopia as the origin of humankind. It's an honor and great pleasure for me to open the second UNESCO America African Research Summit of 2016, which is co-hosted with the African Union and organized to provide a unique opportunity for Africa's young scholars and scientists to share their recent research findings with scientists from Africa and other parts of the world. This summit is also expected to provide opportunities for participants to learn on the development of scientific evidences, focusing on the current team and preparation of a roadmap for the future undertakings. Moreover, I'm confident that participants will view the summit as a platform and an opportunity for scientific society, networking, and career development. The theme for this year's UNESCO America Summit is entitled Infectious Diseases and Women's Health, which I believe is apt and timely, with the purpose of facilitating the building of research capacity to address public health emergencies of infectious causes. This is to mean that, apart from enjoying the scientific forum, this summit is an opportunity for the scholars to discuss and outline guiding principles for policymakers on how to translate knowledge into actions. As part of the summit, I'm also glad to note and appreciate the organizers plan to award fellowships in recognition of the participant scientific contribution and for the first time, as already other keynote, keynote speakers mentioned, a specific award for Best African Female Researchers Award. This is definitely a good news because this kind of recognition encourages the development of models for other women to emulate and increase in their commitment to engage in research work and provide leadership to the betterment of Africa's health sector. It is a known fact that encouraging and supporting researchers, researchers is also enhancing the development endeavors of the sector. A specific to African female researchers, who are the key drivers of health in Africa, Empowering and advancing their contribution should be a priority in our health sector development plans. As an African researcher, as already well noted, in general, we have to admit that our contribution to and engagement in the international scientific arena is very limited. The research publication from the whole Africa in five years period, in all science fields, were not higher than single countries single country's contribution in Europe. Review of scientific publication has shown that there is a parallel growth of economy and research outputs. The higher the economy, the more the research undertaking is. Probably you know very well, the higher publications are coming from top from US, second from China, third from Germany, Japan, UK, and France, in such order. This is also true in their, in, their, in their economic capacity across the world. When we come to Africa even, South Africa leads, Egypt, Tunisia, Nigeria, Algeria, and Morocco follows. This the message is, when we do research, we grow. When we grow, we do more research. As an individual, as a young researcher, 
I have also noted that research is the best learning method. And when we do research, we know that we read the world, and the world reads us. Read us. Dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me come to the current agenda or the current thing. My understanding is that the first summit entitled Accelerating Access and Sustaining Innovation that was held a year ago concluded with a declaration that addresses the need to reinforce capacity building and international efforts to cope with unpredictable events and risks associated with poor management of weak health systems. Collectively, our capacity to anticipate, identify, and mitigate unforeseen, in some cases, foreseen diseases, will ensure the good health of our citizens. We cannot afford to be complacent and deal only with here and now, because if we fail to anticipate and plan, it will be at the peril of the lives of the highly vulnerable group, which are children and women. As the expression goes, failing to plan is failing to fail. Specifically related to the issue of women and health, I want to note that women are at high risk for infectious disease claiming 15 million lives globally. Therefore, we have to work hard to reduce such a health disparity and reduce the burden of disease among women. To this end, as highlighted in the objectives, this summit is important because we purposefully build research capacity in the African health research community with a special focus on women's health and emergent infectious diseases. We actively plan to showcase and sh share innovative research taking, research taking place in projects, programs, and initiative access. The development of knowledge and sharing platforms and culture will significantly contribute to the dissemination of evidence-based practices. Thirdly, we develop platforms and network opportunities to discuss challenges, opportunities, and proposed strategies to support health decisions. Lastly, but not least, as already well noted, we should also empower young researchers who are the future of tomorrow. Finally, the, this summit, as you dialogue to contribute to building research capacity in the African research community, with a special focus on infectious disease and women's health, I wish you a productive summit and a pleasant stay in Addis. I declare that the second UNESCO Mars is officially open. Thank you.